All right, welcome everybody to the webinar on how the chambers and associations are monetizing their virtual events. My name is Steve Edwards, the CEO of Premier Virtual. Thank you for participating today. Uh, today we have some great panelists from different organizations throughout the country. Um, and I'm going to introduce them real quickly, let them say who they are, what they do. Um, then we're going to get into how they are monetizing. So if you have questions, you know, put it into the chat. My team uh, here at Premier Virtual will be answering those questions and getting it to the panelists. So we'll start with you, uh, Marie, down here in sunny South Florida with us. Uh, you, uh, introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. Steve, thank you for inviting me to participate in this event. My name is Marie Suarez. I'm the CEO, Executive Director of the greatest Hollywood Chamber of Commerce down here in Broward County. We're the second largest chamber in our region. And um, I've been in this business for 20 years. Love it. Uh, it's, uh, it it's, it it's an honor, in fact, to be able to to uh, be involved in the business community and and, and, and and participate in economic development for our region. And, and um, I just love it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Marie. Uh, Jeff in Atlanta. Yes, sir. Jeff Clare, CEO of Be A Hero, Hire A Hero. And we predominantly work with wounded, ill, and injured veterans, as well as transitioning service members and all veterans and putting them back into their career fields. And uh, this is not a job, this is, this is my life. So uh, we enjoy what we do. All right, thank you, Jeff. And, uh, you know, we always love the helping the, the veterans. Uh, you know, my, myself, Jamie and Jason, we're all, uh, we're all veterans as well. And, and uh, another one too, uh, a veteran of the uh, a Marine, uh, Larry Miller. Can you introduce yourself? Hey, thanks, Steve. My name is uh, Larry Miller. I work for the United States Veteran Chamber of Commerce. I uh, retired this past year for the Marine Corps. And we came on because uh, of Jeff Clare helping us out last fall of uh, doing the uh, virtual hiring fair for veterans transitioning service members or spouses and caregivers. So our, we've been doing, we're on our second iteration. We do one in March and we're gonna do uh, two more throughout the year. Uh, so we target the veteran and their family uh, population, but we, what we do is we target it uh, worldwide is how we're approaching this one. So we're looking for companies and schools that look across the United States and even across the world. All right, thank you, Larry. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show a quick little uh, couple screens to show how organizations are monetizing this because that's what a lot of people want to know is we have a virtual event. How can we make money? So we want to be able to show you what you can do with a couple different um, slides here. Um, so let me make sure I share my screen before somebody tells me I'm not sharing my screen. All right. Can everybody see my screen right here? All right. So uh, when, you, when you're looking at a registration page, um, when you're talking with your potential companies that are out there, the first place they want to know where are they going to be branded? Where is their name going to be out there? Um, and this was one of the registrations. This was actually uh, Marie's registration page. Uh, for their event, they had all of the chambers of commerce in Broward County uh, came together and did a uh, back to business virtual expo. Now they didn't just do a virtual expo, they also added a career fair portion into it as well that I'm gonna go over. But a couple of the things that they had in here is, you know, on this uh, top left-hand side is this is the expo. So this is a graphic that you can now design to be able to put logos on there, anything. Uh, they could have commercials up there, uh, organizations that their sponsors, they could have commercials. They could put additional videos down here. So there's a lot of different ways that you can sell company logos uh, when you're doing a, uh, an event just on the registration page. So now if we take kind of a closer look, 
is you could put sponsor logos on there. You can put sponsors' names on there. Uh, you know, we've had some organizations that have came through and put a, uh, here's our main sponsor. Uh, you know, one of our organizations in Tennessee, uh, Amazon did an event. So Amazon was their prime sponsor. So they had Amazon as the only one on their registration page. Uh, and then you can have commercials. So um, on the platform now, there can be up to seven commercials that you can put on the registration page. So these are all little commercials that you can charge your organization. Maybe it's somebody that's going to speak. Maybe it's a commercial that they want um, on the event. But there are two in the top box. And then they have another seven. Um, and then this is something that is new. Uh, Marie and Larry and Jeff, I don't think you guys have even seen this yet. Uh, this is the new booth design. So this gives you more opportunity to monetize. So when that uh, candidate logs in, they are going to see this top logo everywhere. So now this is my main sponsor or my sponsors are going to be on every page that is there. So that is a great opportunity for you to be able to charge your organizations um, to have that. Another thing is you can have the priority of placement where you want to choose a lobby. So again, this was the Broward County event that they had, and they had their main exhibitor hall, their career fair, and then they had all of their sponsor logos in there as well. So again, more opportunity for you to be able to put sponsor logos out there. The more places you can have them, the better it is, the more that you can charge them. And this was just something that you know, we put together as some sample uh, sponsorship packages that are out there. And, and again, everybody has something a little different and, and we'll kind of get with, you know, Jeff, Marie and Larry on this is the kind of, you know, maybe how they did this. Uh, but this is one that, that we put out here is, you know, if you have a gold sponsorship and, and they're going to be in all the promotions, they're on the registration page, they have the main, uh, you know, the main sponsor on there. Uh, they can have a webinar during the event and all the booth sponsors. You could, charge $5,000. You know, then if you say, okay, you're just not going to be on the, on all the promotions, but you have some different, you know, aspects out there. You could now charge a little bit less. And then if you want to charge a bronze sponsorship, you know, you could charge a little less, but you could still get them on that front page, you know, put them in a different logo as well, um, or their logo in a different place. Maybe it's on the right-hand side of the registration page instead of on the main thing. Um, and then you could charge just boots. Um, and, and again, you know, we have some organizations that charge $100 for a booth, some charge $1,000 for a booth. So it really kind of depends on you. This is just kind of a sample. But if you look at an event, um, and let's just say you had two gold sponsors, five silver sponsors, and 10 bronze, and then you had 100 booths, you could look at, you could do $50,000. Now, not everybody might have 100 booths. Maybe they have 50 booths. Well, that drops a little bit then but maybe you charge a, a platinum sponsor and you charge them even more. And, and again, these are the ways that you can go about trying to really help your clients um, and, and get their brand out. You know, maybe it's an event that you're going to do for one organization and you say the, Hey, I want to do a, a hiring event or a trade show for an individual company. Um, you could charge them and, and again, you know, monetize that. So what it looks kind of in real time, um, and, and you know, uh, Larry, I'm going to use your platform here, and this is one of the events that uh, Larry's team did, is here's the graphic on the left-hand side. Again, they had some dates, they had some times, but if you can see, you can really customize how you choose to be able to do this. Uh, on the right-hand side, all of this information here too, again, can be customized by you as the host of the event to be able to charge for that. Uh, the videos up here, again, these, they just put in just some training videos, but if you wanted to, you could in turn charge for that spot. Um, so just on this page alone, um, you could have this graphic. There's one place to monetize. These commercials are two and three. This uh, here, again, it's all customizable. So you can put logos in here. You can put links in here. You could put anything that you want uh, to be able to put in here. And again, here's the Broward one um, where they had, and this is where they put their logos of their candidates 
for or, um, their sponsors right here on the right hand side. So again, lots of different places and, and for you to be able to monetize um, your events on here. So let's see. All right, does uh, Marie, let's, uh, you know, I'll start with you on this is what do you think, right? When you're monetizing, how did you come up with uh, you, you know, your prices and your sponsors? How did you go about um, that process? Uh, well, uh, we've been hosting in-person expos and, and, and um, we already had a kind of price point that worked well for, for our Chamber of Commerce and our region. Um, but, but uh, and, and something I, I found out during this, this, uh, this COVID uh, situation is that our sponsors are really still here to help us. So we kind of, you know, and, and gathering all the chamber and give them more exposure to the same price was kind of a, a, a great attraction for, for them. So we use the same scales of uh, scaling of prices that we usually do on an in-person expo and, uh, but give them um, um, more opportunity. So for example, uh, on your, on your platform, Steve, after an expo like this, you, you, you're you able to download all of the data of everybody you, you meet in the booth. So this was really uh, uh, something that our sponsor uh, really appreciated. So they had the information of each person that visited the virtual booth, their name, their email address, uh, they could add uh, some discussion. So it all they, uh, downloaded on an Excel format and our, our sponsor really appreciated that. Um, excuse me. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I, I'm, I'm very surprised and very happy to see that uh, most of the big corporation were um, really wanted to continue to support uh, uh, small businesses and, and uh, we were able to, to um, keep the same um, pricing for our, our, our sponsorship, but it kind of pivoted the, the, um, the benefits of it and okay. to expand. So it was not just the Hollywood Chamber, now it was all of the Chamber in Broward County. And we all agreed to, to uh, sponsor that the members of our Chamber are not. So we did a lot of sharing in, the, in, in that yeah, time. That's, you know, and that's something, you know, to, to, to really, and I'm just gonna kind of touch on this because of that, that event is, you know, previously it was something maybe in, you know, one location at one place where, you know, now on the virtual, uh, you had 14 chambers that were together. And, and how, much, how did the planning go? Well, that was interesting since it was a first for everyone. So, um, you know, it was a great idea and there was a lot of chef in the kitchen and a lot, a lot of a CEO of other chamber that, you know, we do it this way and we do it that way. Uh, but at the end, I think it all came out and, and we had a lot of meetings and, and, and Steve's team was very supportive of all of our of our uh, crazy ideas, <laughs> but at the end, we kind of put like three people in charge that uh, took the leads and they ran things by us, but these people took the lead and they were able to, to deliver what we all needed. So we limited the amount of people that could uh, make decision in, in this expo to move forward. In fact, I think Steve, we had to, uh, to, to, to change the date because of, uh, there's so many changes, so many ideas. So it was, you know, and, and, and starting a, a marketing on, on a virtual platform like this, a lot of our members were very apprehensive. Uh, how are we going to build a boot, a virtual boot? How am I going to do that? So it was a lot of education, a lot more than we thought it would be. But at the end, it all came out. And I think people were very happy. Perfect. Thank you. Larry, um, you know, with, with yours, you do it more on the on, on the career fair side of it with your chamber. Can you give us a little bit of, um, you know, maybe, you know, either the pricing or how you put it together to be able to, um, you know, make your event successful? Yeah, thanks, Steve. So 
When we got introduced through Jeff Clare, uh, he's the one who really helped us on the first one. I got to give him a lot of credit for the assistance on how to kind of develop this. What we did is we try to look at it from uh, approaching it from a year cycle. We want folks to come on for a year package is what we really want because for us, for the veteran side and transitioning, they're always transitioning throughout the year. So there's a new population every three to four months kind of cycling through uh, the event. And that's one of the reasons for like 21, we're doing three events based off of traditional and historical transition from the military timeframes. But what we did was we went in and way we monetized it was uh, we set um, the, uh, um, we said, hey, depending on what level you come into is what services we'll give you back. So one of them is we'll give you all the resumes of all the people that were on the hiring bid at the end, depending on what level you were at, which was a good thing. The second is the access to email addresses um, on the back end. So if people were in shopping around but didn't really touch your booth, you could go back and pull Larry's resume and say, hey, I think he'd be a fit for this company. He just didn't stop here. So let me contact. And obviously, we don't sell any private data. We're very sensitive to that. The other part is, is we looked at it as we brought in the federal government side and state and local government. So we have a couple different things going on simultaneously because as most people that transition on military, not everybody fits into one mold. So they're going to school, they're going to go to entrepreneurship, they're going to want to remote work. It's just a, a menagerie of stuff. Um, the thing that we're working on to do better uh, learning points were is to make sure you have good follow up on the back end of the event, especially with the veterans and stuff, and seeing if they got hired and being able to better serve them. Um, Cause it's very frustrating. And I agree. Cause I've lived through the same thing is you get through a part of a hiring event and then no one calls you back. And even if they would just say, Hey, we're just not interested. You're not, uh, you don't get an answer. Um, the other thing where we monetize, but more develop this is, and Steve, this goes back to you and Jamie, particularly Adam for this was we regionalized all our categories. So since we took ours to the proverbial global scale, we built the Pacific region, we built the Southeast region and stuff, and we base it off of veterans are not going to lead or move to certain places. So you might as well just accept what you have. And then we built subcategories to that. And a lot of work on Steve's team, um, which was a tremendous help on this thing, but huge win on the back end because it made it easy for people to navigate in the platform itself. Um, and we were very successful. We had about a thousand people on for a December event. We did really well uh, for what we started with. Um, and then the other, last thing is, is for us, Montez, we scale it to the market. So we're not just, we're unique because everybody's unique, but we looked at education. So we're making sure that we got the education piece. We're making sure we have the jobs piece. And then this time, we've added a remote job category so people can load the remote jobs. So you could be living in one state and take the job three states away and never have to move. And we also looked at the internships. That was something we missed last time. I shared that with everybody. So if you have internships on a job fair, please put them out in a category because people are looking for them. We just didn't connect the dots last time correctly. And um, that was a big win because the federal government has a lot of internships that they want to use military coming out, have skill bridge and a lot of other programs that they can be funded to go use and to come into jobs into the marketplace. And um, it really helps itself out. So, uh, you know, that's kind of our one over the world on it. Okay. Thank you, Larry. And what about you, Jeff? How do you, how do you monetize your events? Well, in partnership with the United States Veterans Chamber of Commerce, it, it was, as Larry said, it was, a combined effort, you know, Premier Virtual is a military led organization in terms of the leadership all served in the military and you truly got it. But the model that we in, introduced to our, ourselves and our team is a year subscription. So companies can join on and have that ongoing relationship, you know, this is a really weird time. The brick and mortar career shows are pretty much not happening right now. And so the virtual piece 
you can't go from door to door looking for a job. And so this has made the entry point for people to find gainful employment. This is a godsend. This really truly makes a difference. And uh, monetizing it, it was a simple opportunity for corporations to get in front of a, a, an amazing group of job seekers. And this platform just hit a home run. All right. Well, you know, thank you for that, Jeff. And, you know, I think you kind of touched on it and, and, and Marie and Larry. And, and if you think about what could be done and what can't be done, right? Like you said, right? That brick and mortar, that in-person event, as of now, it, it can't be done. Um, you know, we did an event last week in Virginia that had 15,000 job seekers on it with 350 companies. And, and, you know, one of my team members said, you know, how much do you think a hotel would cost to be able to put on that event? And I said, you're asking the wrong question because it couldn't be done because not everybody's gonna come into one place in, a, in the middle of a state and have companies from all over and candidates from all over. And when you think about Jeff and Larry in your event, right? People were logging in from overseas to be able to come into this because they're getting out of the military. They're not flying from you know, Japan or Korea or Afghanistan over here to you know, Texas or Florida to attend a job fair. It's just not, not there. And now people can say, well, what about a job board? Hey, job boards are great. You know, can it can go in, but this is really taking, um, you know, the virtual aspect is taking that, that in-person event and a job board and, and, and putting it together. Uh, now, my next question, and, and I'll kind of leave it open to uh, any one of you, we'll start, you know, we'll start with Jeff on this one is, in the future, do you see yourself going, um, it may not work for you guys, but like a hybrid type of event where you could have a virtual and a in-person? Well, for years, that's that was the, the, the model that was used. But, you know, Steve, finding a job is a job. And it's very expensive when you have no paycheck coming in to go out there. You know, we partnered with Save a Suit Foundation to make sure every veteran is appropriately dressed. There's so many pieces to this pie, but for, I, I can't tell you how long I'm on the COVID task force here in Georgia. This isn't going away tomorrow. So the brick and mortar shop might not open for quite a while. And, but companies still have to operate. And this is the platform. We've got to be there for our service members and giving them the opportunity to have a face-to-face -face interview. This is amazing. And we're getting accolades from many of the service members because of giving them this opportunity that they missed for quite some time. All right, thank you, Jeff. And, and, you know, kind of talking about, uh, you know, the virtual event. And, and I don't care if it's a, an in-person event, a virtual event, what platform that's on, that's out there, what does an event do? It connects an attendee with an organization. Now, is that attendee a job seeker or is it another small business trying to you know, talk with other businesses? It's that connection that is being made. And, and peel back the layers, that's really what it does, right? And you want to be able to do it in an easy way. Now, Marie, same question to you is going forward, you know, with all of the chambers in Broward, is that something have you guys talked about doing hybrid events? Um, is it virtual? What's kind of your thought on, on being able to do that? So um, <laughs> we're, we're kind of inventing the wheel as we go. Um, of course, right now we're not planning anything in person. We've done a golf tournament outside, uh, half, you know, 50% and self distancing. Uh, but uh, right now we're gonna continue on, 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 on virtual platform. Once we can do in person event, I'm not sure I will bring the hybrid portion because if I do an in, if I invest in an in-person event, I'm 
hoping to get the in-person attendance. So instead of doing an event hybrid, I think I am going to offer both, but we will have a virtual events. It will be a virtual event and it will be an in-person event when it's safe again, it will be an in-person event. Uh, you know, we, our, our focus is not career fair, although it is incredibly important. We had a sidebar before this meeting started how uh, in, um, organization are really now looking for for um, for job seekers so it is important but our our main mission is much more to give our member the opportunity to network amongst uh, each other and they are starting to, to to get used to this new virtual thing we pivoted immediately uh, in march be, and uh, because we were lucky the president of our chamber is a, a um, uh, uh, works with NSU and NSU is kind of uh, leaders in, in, in virtual learning. So they really helped us pivot immediately. And we're starting our good morning breakfast and our networking and our number grew and we had great attendance. There's a few that decides not to, to come, oh no, I'm not doing Zoom, Do, Zoom is not for me. And, and what I tell them is that if you want to continue, this is not going anywhere. We're here now. In February, most of us did not know what Zoom was, but now it's here and I think it's here to stay. So this is kind of where I'm going. And in fact, I have a leadership program and um, and it's we have a community program and we try to pivot it in, in virtually and did not does not work very well. It's it's a kind of a contact sport of sort. So now we're creating a new leadership, part of this leadership program, but this one is a mindset program. And this one will be for and made for a virtual platform. So I don't know, I know I, I took a long detour, Steve, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm gonna do the hybrid. I, 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 that I can't tell you. Right now in my mind, if I am gonna invest in doing an in-person event, it will be an in-person event, but I will also continue doing virtual events. Gotcha. And, and there's going to be, right, there's people out there that the minute something can open up, they are ready to go to an in-person, right? There's, you know, especially now people that have been in their house for a year, they they haven't really got out and they, and they haven't gone out there. I mean, again, we're very, you know, we're fortunate here in South Florida that we can get out of the house and it's, you know, warm weather, but you know, we're not all up in, you know, Wisconsin where it was 40 below two weeks ago and you can't get out of the house and, and, and it's, you know, they're, they're ready to go for that. Um, but I think, you know, with a, lot, with a lot of organizations that we talk to out there, it's, you know, from the trade show aspect to it, to, to career fairs, um, they are looking at hybrid models. And, and, and people ask me a lot is, you know, what is a hybrid model? Right, you're, you're, you're gonna start hearing a lot more of that going forward. And I think organizations are you know, starting to look at that now. In, in a hybrid model could be one of two things. You know, and Marie, even without you saying a hybrid model, it's gonna be a hybrid model because you said you're either gonna do in-person or you're gonna do virtual, right? So you might have your in-person event on one week and then you just have a virtual aspect of it the next week. Because when you start to look at all of this going forward, and, and, and this is really with all the people out there is, you have to look at organizations and you have to look at candidates. There are gonna be some candidates that do not wanna be in public. So they will not travel. Jeff said it, right? This isn't going away anytime soon and nobody knows that answer. So you have those potential attendees of an event that they're just not gonna go in public. You have the other side of these people that say, I am ready to go back to public. I don't want to be on a Zoom anymore. I don't want to log into something virtual is I want that face-to-face -face and shake your hand. You also have the organizations that are the same way. The organizations that say, I can't send my recruiter to this. I can't send one of my um, you know, team members to this trade show or career fair. Um, you know, or they give them a choice and they say, no, I don't want to go. So you're going to say, right, and, and, and back to the hybrid model is maybe today is in person, next week is virtual. Or we have some of our organizations that are already starting to think about, you know, 2022 is they're going to have an in-person, but they're also at the same time going to have virtual. So those people that don't want to go can log in from anywhere. 
And it's still that virtual opens up, you know, so many people. Uh, Larry, Larry. Yeah, so capitalize on what you said, Steve, is talking to a couple of really the big corporations based off of what we're experiencing is I think the hybrid models reality is going to come. So one of the things is, you know, if you bring two recruiters to Miami, Florida for three days, you're probably in for a thousand to two thousand dollars from start to finish of airplane tickets and everything else. And your return on investments, like you really got 20 or 30 people that actually showed up to your booth where you could actually physically talk to. So talking to a couple of very large organizations, their thought is behind the scenes is um, we put two or three people in a booth and they come and Larry walks up and talks to uh, Marie. Marie says, well, I really like Larry's resume. Larry, here's a login. I got another recruiter, but that recruiter is now sitting in Denver, Colorado. And then I can have a point to point more in depth interview so that you can continue your ground game faster and not lose the candidates that you lose at the door. Because what, what I explain to everybody all the time is we've all done the, you know, the hiring fairs in person, 80% of the people walk through the door are going to turn right. And it's like a you know, home show or a gun show or a car show. You just go up and down the aisles. And then by the time you get to about the three, three quarter way, you lose interest and you just don't have it. So I think the hybrid's the way to go, particularly like the way Premier is, because um, we've looked at a couple other models. I know Steve and Jamie and I have talked a bunch about this stuff over the last few months and, and those things. But Premier is a 15 minute or less setup requirement. So it's so fast. And then the training on the front end and the support in the back end makes it for the companies very uh, easy to use. I know after ours, I, I talked to every company during the job fair, I hopped around the booths and they had a very good flavor for how Premier worked. And I, for folks around the webinar, tell you that if you want to contact any of us, I can tell you all, you know, what we did good, what we did bad, but I'll tell you that it's a phenomenal way to do it. The other part is when you do localized job fairs, like in South Florida, you're down at the end of Florida. I mean, I grew up in Miami, so I'm well familiar with, you know, Broward County and Dade County and stuff like that. But there's a lot of people you're kind of leaving on the cutting room floor that are sitting somewhere else that are making a decision to move for various reasons. So that having the virtual piece allows that to get marketed out there. I saw there's a question in the thing. What do you find is the best way to market job seekers? I'll answer that, at least from my standpoint, LinkedIn. We are having so much success on LinkedIn, particularly military-wise, because that's where everybody's going. Because they're kind of not as interested in Facebook and Instagram. I get all that. That's It's kind of an age thing, personally. But LinkedIn is one we have found that has been the biggest success story and then and then networking off of LinkedIn, LinkedIn with other people. And that's where we're finding people just generating other people and everything else. And, um, you know, one of the things I'll, I'll share the last thing is uh, like Premier, along with uh, Jeff Clare's Hire Heroes and stuff is once you cross pollinate with people, it builds your network. And what we found was when we did our one in December, organizations came on and they were networking inside the platform with other companies and schools, which from, if you're taking business sense, you'd be like, well, you're undercutting me, but I look at it differently. You're growing the network and you're growing the worth of what you're setting up because they're going to come back on. And for us on the veteran side, it is giving more and more opportunities to job seekers, which means it's generating. And we saw on our second day of our event, one third of more population on and almost twice as much traffic in five hours than we did the first day. And it was, and when we asked, it was all word of mouth, like, Hey, this is easy. Go on, see this person, talk to that person, do this. So long answer. Apologize. Right, so to thank you, Larry. There was a, there was a follow-up to that. Um, are you referring to with LinkedIn? Uh, is that the paid advertising or just organic posts? We're just going organic, to be quite honest with you. Um, the uh, I've got LinkedIn, mine's Lawrence Miller, the Colonel USMC, pretty easy to find. But we're just finding that basic LinkedIn is what's work. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's better ways of doing it, and people are much more savvy. But um, I posted our flyer last Monday, and I'm not a social media guy, but I had already 2,000 views by Friday. 
and I had 150 reposts or comments going from there. So, you know, it, it was getting traction and that's from a guy who does not do social media. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm going to throw this to Marie on a, a different aspect. How did you market to attendees of your trade show? Because it wasn't just the organizations, but how did you market to get people to log into the event or see the event? Well, like Larry said, you know, you, you have to get out of your um, your little bubble and kind of team up with other organization. And uh, that's why we kind of brought all of the chambers together who have their own email uh, and, and reach. And so it gave us uh, so many reach from Southeast Broward County to Northwest Broward County and even more than that. And we also have relationship, uh, Chamber of Commerce, we do have a relationship with the local media. And so we were able to also um, get our word out through that. Of course, social media and, and uh, really worked. Uh, we're not really in the job fair uh, business, although we did have a job fair part of this. It was really to get the business networked and, and meet new clients. And that was our goal to, 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 to give our membership as much opportunity as, as they could. So um, we, we kind of used the, the Instagram and the Facebook uh, um, a lot more, but we did use LinkedIn as well uh, for our particular event. And uh, and we do we I don't think nobody paid for for um, for uh, advertisement. It was all organic, but I think it was powerful because it came from all of these chamber and we kind of posted all at the same time. So people were kind of bombarded with that orange image of Back to Business Expo, and I think that's what we try to you know to uh, all together bombard as many people as we could. So. Um, that was our strategy for, for the marketing. Perfect. Jeff, did you have anything to add on that, uh, on that topic? Well, it's just all the corporations we deal with. One thing that they always remember is everybody that we're reaching out to are also consumers. And so they're spending money with the companies that they feel loyal to. And that's the companies that participate in these events. So, um, Social media has been a big help. Managing our database has been a big help. And uh, it's really just word of mouth that's really worked in a very big way. Absolutely. You know, and, and I'll touch on that, you know, a little bit too is, uh, and I don't care again if it's a, a trade show or a career fair, um, it's still an event. And the more people that see it, the better it is. So, you know, you know like you, Larry, I'm not a huge social media fan. I, even though with the company that we have, and, and, and we know that it's out there, but when you're looking at a trade show, you look at and say, okay, where do we want to go? What is the target market? You have to be on social media. Is it, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever it is, you want to get it out there because it's all about touch points, you know, and I talk about that with my team a lot is touch points. And from a trade show, the more the people see it, the more that it's in your mind, right? How many times have you, you know, watched a commercial on TV and you saw something and the next thing you know, you have to have it. Is it a, maybe it's McDonald's, you know, where, you know, they, they have it, or maybe it's, you know, I, you know, I got a three-year-old and a six-year-old and there's times where my son will see something and next thing you know, my wife is like, hey, he wants this, right? And it's like, no, but they saw it, right? Commercial is in your mind early and it's the same aspect. And when you look at a career fair, where else can you advertise, right? Sometimes it's, you know, is it job boards? Is it, you know, is it social media? Is it, you know, LinkedIn, like Larry said, that is huge. And you can do things organically. You know, another thing to do is if you're looking at from a, a trade show aspect of it, also to a, um, a career fair. Uh, you know, last week we were uh, a major, the presenting sponsor for South Florida Tech Hub for their annual kickoff meeting. So they posted it on their social media. And then what did we do is we in turn posted it on our social media. So then each one of our team members, they liked, they commented, and they shared. 
right? Especially on social media, it's all about the algorithms that are out there. So if you go to your sponsors and you say, hey, can you also share this on your social media? Or you tag them on their social media and it doesn't matter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, is you're getting out there because you're, again, they're paying you to be a sponsor. So they want to be able to go out there and say, hey, we're a sponsor of this event and, and, and we're able to do that. So uh, last question I'm going to kind of throw out there uh, before we leave it open for, for more questions um, is, do you feel there's anything or a better thing that you could do on monetizing? Um, is there more, more places that you could monetize or, or how could you monetize it even better um, the next go around? Or what did you learn from the first time to the to the to your second or third time? So we'll start with Jeff on this one. It's really the continuum with the database and continuing to have our job seekers be notified in real time. So one of the things that you know I'm encouraging is the hot job of the week. And so that the larger employers, smaller employers and really most important is the small employers is to get their information out to the masses. And uh, that's something we're gonna do in a bigger way this time. All right, great. I, I love what you said there, Jeff, is right, the hot job of the week, right? Or company of the week. You sell that instead of it always being there is you have hot job of the week on the registration page. More monetizing, I mean, that's, that's a great idea. Uh, what about you, Larry? I think it, what we've been trying to do is on this one, as we go through this year, is we look for other things the company can bring and, and not so much charge them for it, but to get them to come on. So like um, if you've got a webinar that you're going to host, can you give it to us? We can put it out there so people can watch. Um, training opportunities, education opportunities, those type of things. And particularly because we're, you know, our, our clientele is a little bit different. We're kind of unique. Um I try to look at much more broader, whereas like with the colleges is one I'm on for a year, but tell me what else you're doing throughout the year, MBA programs, certificates, uh, cyber, you know, cyber certifications. And I'm trying to help monetize them at the same time in the sense of advertising for them, because I think it's it's a good business model that you're helping them and they're coming back to you for a longer, you know, bite of the apple. Final thing I'll tell you is for us. I am a firm believer in uh, a good ground game and the, the micro donation, the micro companies are more important to me than the FedExes and the Amazons necessarily because you get name recognition for that. But what I found was like we brought on the society of professional engineers and that was one of the biggest hits through the thing because they could go laterally across 30 different companies that didn't even know they existed or never had a contact. So I think that's one of the things is don't, don't get focused on you have to have the three or four big companies all the time because that's the only thing anybody wants. A lot of these smaller 50, 100 person companies really did well when I saw on ours because after we looked at our analytics, I was pretty impressed. Final point on your booths, if you're doing a booth and stuff, it's about salesmanship. Whatever you put in is garbage in, is garbage out. And I say that very pointedly because we had a company. Big company out of the Northeast, but didn't really put any effort. So when you went in there, it looked like they were just wanted bag boys and cashiers when they had all kinds of jobs. So the more you put on your your booth up front, your video, the video is really what really plays well. And you can hang some type of link that lets people read it. This is where you monetize even more because the companies I saw that did that, even small ones, had big traction as we watched the data. All right. Thank you, Larry. Uh, you know, Marie, actually, there's a question uh, for you. Uh, when you hosted your joint chamber event, how did you divvy up the sponsorships? Uh, you brought the sponsorship, you kept the money. So each chamber had to, the more you could bring, you kept the money. So um, that's how we div it up. So uh, and it worked well. Everybody knew that at the beginning. And um, that's how we okay. went around. So, and there was another question to that too, is, you know, how did you share costs and revenue? Um, that was, you guys split the costs. We did. 
we split the costs. Uh, we have an organization called the Brarick Councils of Chamber, and uh, we do have some funds in there. We all the CEO of all these chamber uh, meet monthly, and we do have you know two annual event. One is a Washington fly-in, and the other one is a uh, um, a um, a, uh, um, a business uh, um, event, uh, the small business person of the year, I'm sorry, <laughs> event. So we did have money in the kitty that, that and all the, we used that money um, to, 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 uh, for the cost and then each chamber uh, kept their revenue. Gotcha, so to kind of recap on that is you, you split the cost and if whatever chamber brought in the revenue, they kept it. You didn't split the revenue between all of those. And, no. and I believe you guys only put a certain amount of spots out there for the sponsors. So it was whoever sold those first. Yes, and that's how it went. And uh, it went well, there was no uh, dis dispute at the end. Everybody was understanding of that, the rules. So it went well. And, and, and what I think we learn, we learning here, we continue to learn here is that uh, people are getting used uh, to, to these virtual uh, platforms. And it, this was our first business expo like this. So there was a lot of apprehension, like I said at the beginning, but I think it's gonna grow and, um, uh, and there will be way of, of better way of monetar monetarizing the, the, these events for and, and give him a, a opportunity to our members. Um, it's very local here. It's not like you, Larry and Jeff, where you can, and this is incredible that you have this platform to really recruit people from everywhere and give opportunity for job seekers and an and, and, and organization to, to meet, even if they're not even in the same states. Uh, we're de definitely a little bit more um, quaint here where it's kind of probably 30 miles away <laughs> for any business to do business together. But I think in both case, it, it's great opportunities. So. Perfect. So, well, thank you, Marie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Larry. Uh, does anybody have any last questions from the, uh, for the uh, webinars or for the panelists? All right, well, I wanna thank you, uh, the three of you today for uh, you know, jumping on and, and, and showing everything. Uh, if anybody that's out in the audience would like to stay on and see a demo uh, of the platform to show how we're doing it a little bit more uh, and see, you know, Jeff talked about it, Larry talked about it, the data, the analytics, uh, analytics of it, uh, we're gonna show that information. So if anybody does wanna stop on uh, or stay on, we, uh, we are gonna show that. Uh, otherwise, you know, Marie, Jeff, Larry, you guys can jump off and we appreciate your time today. Thank you for being one of our panelists. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, give it like a minute and then we will uh, I'll start up and do a quick little demo of the platform.